So today we're going to be chatting about AI attributes. And I thought that the best way to frame this would just be to first starting about our approach in AI generally. Um, so if you've been following Atio uh, at all over the past year, you might have noticed us uh, come out with blog posts, posts in social, um, really signal that we're investing heavily in AI. Uh, and that's come through a variety of features so far. First, we shipped AI capabilities to our workflow automation builder. Uh, and today, I'm going to be walking through what we've shipped in terms of AI attributes. Uh, now, in terms of broad strokes and how we're thinking through this, um, one of the things that we really want to make easy for folks in the CRM is turning unstructured data into structured data. And so unstructured data might be in the form of all details on a record in Atio, or it might come in the form of a description of a business or a pricing model that a research agent is able to find on the internet for you. And then providing you the ability to actually categorize that data so that you can take action on it in terms of uh, filtering, automatic routing and reports. So in that sense, AI attributes is one of our first efforts to make it uh, easy to do work that would generally take a lot more time in terms of researching companies or sorting through information in the CRM and then turning that data into a format that you can easily interact with across the team. So in terms of the feature itself, so I'm looking at a view of all companies here in Atio and you see that there are a variety of attributes on the screen here. Uh, a few of them are highlighted in purple. And what that means is that Atio has automatically provided this information for you through our enrichment service. So when you add a company to Atio with a domain, uh, we're going to fetch a bunch of information through our enrichment providers and bring it to the CRM. So things like the description of the business, primary location, the categories the business is in, uh, estimated ARR, employee range, things like that. And we'll do the same thing for people. So when you add a person to the CRM with an email address, uh, we'll make an enrichment call and see what demographic and person specific information we can grab. Now, as I navigate across the screen here to the right, you'll see that there are additional attributes that are also highlighted in purple, indicating that they've been enriched, but they have a different icon. So any any icon with the light any uh, attribute with the lightning bolt icon indicates something that's being enriched through our enrichment service and now you have the capability to do further enrichment using our ai attributes uh, so you can see that the this information has been automatically filled uh, by an ai attribute now for ai attributes there are a variety of different types that you can use and the one that makes sense will depend on the use case so if I go to add a new attribute here, you can see that we have four different options. So you can create an attribute that automatically classifies a record, one that summarizes information from the record, leveraging all the data that you've stored on that person or company. Uh, we have a research agent, which allows you to uh, deploy an agent to research a business, answer questions, and then bring that information back into the CRM. And then the last one is prompt completion, which uh, effectively acts like a wrapper for an LLM where you can bring information from the CRM and then ask questions that are then answered by the LLM. So stepping through the attributes that I've set up here. So this is a classify record attribute and it works best with either a select or a multi-select attribute type. So what I've done here is I've, I've created an attribute where I want to identify, is this a target business that we should be going after? So I've provided two options, target and non-target. And then I've also provided guidance. So one thing when you're building these attributes is that uh, you do want to do a bit of testing upfront before you start scaling it out and, and applying it to all of your records. And the reason behind that is because, you know, if you've, worked with an LLM before, sometimes there's a bit of prompt engineering that you need to do in order to get the results that you're looking for. Uh, so what I did here is I took care to describe under what instances we want a business to be tagged as target uh, versus when they should be tagged as non-target. Now, in terms of using the attribute, uh, 
you can either recalculate all values within your current view, or you can navigate to a specific cell and recalculate the uh, values for that particular attribute. And we can see that the AI is thinking here, it's processing whether it's target or non-target, and then it decided it was non-target. Uh, whereas for this business here, because they are a uh, SaaS platform and they have over uh, 50 employees, they are marked as target. The other attribute type is summarized record. So I, I demoed this previously, but you know, pulling information from the record into a tight summary. Uh, this can be really helpful if you had some kind of maybe lead flow uh, where you have your team members reviewing leads that are coming inbound or outbound leads that have responded to your emails, uh, whether it's within a list in Atio uh, or you want to push this information into Slack. Using this summarize uh, record attribute can be really helpful so that people can, you know, they don't have to jump around to different attributes on the record itself, uh, they can just have a summary that has all the key information that they need. And I touched on this already, but this is the research agent uh, attribute. So if you want to find additional information from outside of the CRM uh, about a particular business, whether it's a pricing model, uh, current investors of the business, whether there's any news about a startup potentially raising another round, uh, this is the best attribute to use for that. Uh, again, like I mentioned, you do want to test your guidance and see what the results are because there might be a bit of prompt engineering required. Uh, but uh, this is a great way to further enrich your CRM. And then the last, um, the last AI attribute type is prompt completion. Uh, like I mentioned before, I think for a lot of use cases, you'll find that our other AI attributes will fit the bill. Uh, but if you find that you, you know, want your data structured in a different way, or, or you want to you know, do something where an LLM would be helpful in terms of making a decision, uh, prompt completion block can be really helpful. So what I did here is um, I asked for the attribute to do a little bit of reasoning in terms of you know, based on a business of this size, which we're pulling from the record, would this business uh, be likely to have an IT team that requires vendor complete a security questionnaire? Uh, so in sales, this is something that uh, is always good to get ahead of uh, because security questionnaires end up taking a lot of, a lot of time and effort. Um, so being able to flag if we were to pursue this particular deal, will a security questionnaire and conference of security review be involved? Uh, could be quite helpful to know. And so the uh, attribute takes that information and then decides based on the size of the business, uh, whether or not a security questionnaire would be required. And you can see for these businesses of this size, uh, it's extremely likely that they would require a security questionnaire. So, in terms of the demo, I mean, that's, that covers pretty much everything. Those are the different attribute types you have available. Uh, creating an attribute is really easy. You'll just go ahead and select create new attribute and then uh, select one of the uh, types that you want to use. Uh, additionally, you can, you can sometimes navigate to creating an AI attribute from creating a regular attribute. So for example, if I select currency, uh, you'll see here at the bottom, I can actually set up an AI autofill for this. Uh, and so I could use a prompt completion or research agent to say, you know, funding and ask how much funding has this business raised in their last round of funding. So you can create an AI attribute uh, directly based on the type of AI attribute, or if you're, if you know that you want to capture something like funding, uh, sometimes you'll be able to see the ability to do an AI auto.
Oakville. So if you don't have that information on hand, uh, you can further enrich it yourself. All right. Appreciate the time today, folks. Cheers.